Welcome to the doctor's kitchen with me, Dr. Rufi, and in today's episode, we have Dr. Max Pemerton, who's a psychiatrist. He has a specialist interest in eating disorders, and he has written a fantastic book all about the adventures of the marvelous human body. It's a children's book, it's beautifully illustrated, and we also talk about his time in clinic, his time in medical school, and a fantastic taco recipe. Tell me about your cooking habits. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed about this now. I just thought I'd come and you just make me food and then that'd be it. So every evening, um, I, I go back and I always go shopping, buy loads and loads and loads of vegetables, chop it all up. Okay. And then I'll just sit with a massive bowl and while I'm kind of writing, I yeah. just sort of sit there. And rather than sort of eating junky food or anything, yeah, yeah. I just eat the vegetables and I probably eat maybe eight, ten portions of vegetables. Okay. I really like jack and potato and cheese. Okay, yeah, good. So they're frozen, yeah, they're really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> I feel like I'm selling you jack potatoes. <laughs> no, the thing is, I did a whole feature on new potatoes a few weeks right. ago, just to show people actually, you know, potatoes are very nutrient dense. And I eat a lot of chicken breasts as well. Actually, chicken's much harder. You imagine it's yeah, really easy. Definitely. It's actually really hard to get it to cook. It's a government it tastes a bit like rubbery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or then it's like raw in a pan, it makes you really ill. Exactly. I've got microwave. And I'm very, quite adept, well I say quite adept, I'm not even very adept at the microwave if I'm honest. And then I tend to be very, very boring, so I'll eat just the same thing okay. repeatedly. Yeah, so I'm going to be cooking you some tacos. Um, okay. So very simple food. This is actually blue corn. Uh, supermarkets are getting them in a bit more often now because, you know, the whole gluten-free trend. You'll see them in supermarkets or you can buy them online um, or you can just use the normal whole grain wraps you can okay. buy as well. We've got some lamb's lettuce here. We've got some pinto beans that came from a can, drained and then rinse and that's it. So they're already cooked. Got some baby tomatoes, some corn that you can get from supermarkets. This is actually grown in the UK. And some of this cooking sauce, tomatillo. I'm gonna get you to try this before I put it in the food because it does have jalapenos in. Okay. Try a little bit of that. And if it is too hot, we could do something else. It's a very mild sauce. It's actually totally fine. Is that right? It's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you want to like kilo. Right and we're going to make a very quick guacamole with some smashed avocado, olive oil seasoning, and some red onion that I'm just going to chop. This is. I'm very excited about this because I, I do often eat guacamole, but I just buy it in a little just thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, do, I wouldn't even know where to start. I mean, honestly, you're going to have your mind blown at how easy it is to make your own, and it tastes a lot better. Okay. Max, your book was one of the first things I read when I became a junior doctor. Oh, really? The title of which evades me now, but Confessions trust of a... Me, trust, trust me, I'm, I'm a junior, junior doctor. doctor. Yeah. yeah. That, that book came out of a series of columns that I wrote for The Telegraph when I was like 23 to sort of, you know, uh, junior doctor. Yeah. But at the time, it was really interesting to sort of be able to detail, um, as you know, put down your, your experiences. I remember reading it, I was like, oh my God, this is literally like what my life is right now. <laughs> yeah. And it was so nice to actually someone who's written a book to kind of normalize my experience. Yeah. After being a junior doctor, I then went into work into mental health. I did sort of lots of different jobs. So I worked with a, like a homeless outreach project um, that in the time it was covering King's Cross before kind of King's Cross yeah, became, became cool. Cool, yeah, yeah Before yeah. Google moved in and stuff. And then I also then worked for a, a drug and alcohol project. Um, so I wrote a book about that experience. Amazing. Um, sort of just talking about homelessness and what it's like working with homeless people and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then my third book was about sort of dementia because I then went off and worked in dementia. And how did you know that you wanted to go into psychiatry? So I actually, I, you know, I always wanted to go into psychiatry. Oh, really? I went into medical school to, to, to work in mental health. No way, yeah. that's very really, rare. I know it is very rare. And actually I remember with my, when it, my medical school interview, I said this and the, the professor who's kind of interviewing me kind of took off his glasses and went, why ever would you want to do that? <laughs> And so I just got this idea that actually being a doctor is about sort of standing up for people and advocating for people yeah. and, and you have to kind of find, you know, the people in society that have maybe not got a voice. And so it just was always in my head of like, well, I want to go and work with people with mental health problems because yeah. they haven't got anyone standing up for them and sort of fighting for them. Did you almost feel like it was like your responsibility to prove that professor? Exactly. Right? Do you know, that's exactly what it was like. It kind of made me even more kind of think, right. In this pan, um, we've taken up the uh, sweet corn that I've just dry toasted just to bring out a little bit of the, um, the water and give a little bit of colour to the Did you corn. put oil in that pan first? No, no. no so that okay. was no oil in that one. Um, right. That was just raw uh, sweet corn just okay. chopped off the, off the cob. In here, we've got the pinto beans, uh, the baby tomatoes that I've just halved, uh, the cooking sauce a little bit of seasoning and some paprika as well. So now you, you work in North London, you write children's books now. Yeah. Um, like I love doing medicine, yeah. but just on its own, it can become, I think, quite overwhelming. Absolutely. And it's really nice to do 
to have like lots of other different things to kind of keep you occupied. And particularly for me, kind of being able to write, uh, you know, so I write a column every week. And so, you know, all your kind of thoughts you have in your head or the kind of things and frustrations to be able to have, you know, an outlet for that. So I work full time in the NHS and I don't think I'd be able to handle working full time, ironically, if I didn't also do other stuff. Yeah, so you work full time? So, yeah, yeah. Because, oh, wow. yeah. Well, yeah actually, even I, like, I work uh, three or uh, two, three days a week now, oh. clinical, because I've just got so much other stuff to do, like, yeah, yeah. like smashing avocados. Yeah. <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is, and now I'm making uh, a guacamole that is going to blow your mind. Um, uh, how simple it is. I'm just uh, taking... Oh, I, that was a miracle, <laughs> how you just did that. I wanted, I want a replay of that. that was amazing. We How did you do to get that? this in slow motion? I don't know. <laughs> Put the sharp um, knife into the seed yeah. and then you twist it very gently and then it pops out like that. That is amazing because actually that is one of the things that puts me off avocado i can imagine yeah is that, is that i'm like how do you get the thing out and then you squidge it and it's all gone yeah yeah, yeah. i used to work for um, a plastic surgeon um he was a hand surgeon in oh. particular and he was like avocados are one of the most dangerous vegetables that you've got because oh, i suppose it's the fruits of the seed but um it's because uh people just don't know and they go like this and right. they go straight through and then into the hand, obviously. Oh. So you're gonna be really, really careful when you do that. So yeah, I'm just gonna smash this with the back of a fork. I've put both the segments in a bowl, a little bit of seasoning and some olive oil. And then I'm just gonna chop some onion as That's well. That's quite a lot of salt. Yeah, yeah. So well, do, do you worry about salt? Cause I, I was gonna ask you this. Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause I try to never use, I mean, I don't actually also cook, but, yeah, yeah. but as in I never add salt to anything cause I'm also pounded about my high blood pressure. But of then course. I was reading that actually maybe there's not such a close link as we think there is. So, so I, what there's do you think? definitely a link with convenience products right. and uh, sort of takeaway food and the way they use salt in that respect. Yeah. I think if you use uh, the right amount of salt at the right time, you don't need to over salt. Okay. Um, we probably have have uh, unequivocal, uh, unequivocal evidence that excess salt is certainly related to cardiovascular uh, issues. That probably looked like a lot, but it was probably, yeah, like, yeah. probably like a quarter teaspoon. Okay. And because I'm using sea yeah. salt, the crystals themselves, um, when you bite into them, they actually exhibit quite a lot of that salt flavor. Right. Um, so you don't need to use that much. Um, and also this is going to be used as a garnish. Do you know how to dice an onion? Let's be honest, what do you think the answer is? I know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I then, I've I just like, managed oh. to work out that that is an onion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like... So I've just sliced it lengthways so it goes through the stem at the bottom. Right. The trick to this is you want to keep the bit at the bottom because it holds all these beautiful segments together. Okay. Um, and you just peel the outside of it. So you just want to firmly and with a nice sort of claw technique, just chop lengthways like that um, I'm doing it quite thick just okay. to show you here you can do it thinner once you know and then the same way and then you've got a nice fine dice that's quite, it's quite impressive <laughs> I, I don't actually know what I would do I literally don't know if someone said dice and onion I don't know what I would have done so how would you like it it's up to you we can, we can either go guacamole first. Yeah. It's kind of like scones. What do you, what do you, what scones, do you think? What, like, what do you think? How would you do it? I would go, <laughs> I, I would go um, lamb setters as the base. So we're going with a little bit of the beans. And then we're just going to top it off with a little bit of the guacamole on the top here. It's going to be slightly messy. Oh, it's going to be messy. Yeah, okay, yeah. I can so hold this just, up for okay, you if you like. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to get I can eat from this shot. end. Yeah, no, go for it, go for it. Just get your chomps around that. It's actually lovely. Good? It's not spicy at all. Good, it's good. It's literally perfect. Good, I'm glad. Don't be glad. Yeah, no, go for it. Go That's for really it. nice. Just that doesn't look like it's going to be that amazingly tasty, but yeah. actually it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. nice. I actually quite like, if as long as it's not too spicy, uh -huh. I quite like Oaxaca. Oh, yeah. I can handle Oaxaca. Okay. Um, I always have the same things every time, but, but, okay. I, but yeah, I like that. Um, and I really, yeah, I kind of like anything chicken y. So okay. I, used, I was vegetarian for a really long time. All right. Um, and then probably about eight, eight years ago or so, something just clicked in my head and I thought, I, you know, I, I really craved kind of chicken actually. And so I tried red meat because I hadn't really ever eaten red meat particularly. And then I just didn't like it. So I thought I don't really see the point of making myself eat something if I don't particularly like it. Sure. So I just really like chicken. I like fish. I try not to eat too much fish for kind of environmental reasons. So I just pretty much just eat chicken and then vegetables. And you eat 10 vegetables a day. I mean, yeah. you're, you're doing a lot better than the general public there, mate. <laughs> Well, I think the key thing is not bothering to cook it. If I had to cook it, I wouldn't bother. But it's because you just cut it up and then it's just there and you yeah. kind of sit there, you kind of yeah, sit there reading yeah. or whatever, just chomping away. So, yeah. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. There's so many others for you to enjoy right here. Check out the doctorskitchen.com, sign up to the newsletter where I give science-based recipes every single week. There's a podcast, there's two books, there's loads more content on social media, doctors underscore kitchen, and I hope to see you there.